So we've talked about security intelligence in the previous video and long story short, it's not that simple. There's a lot of effort involved, knowledge, tools, it's, it's time consuming and well from time to time it even requires you to have a bit of luck. Now if each and every company out there would have to invest their resources into securing their assets, well most of them would not be able to afford this investment. And secondly, it would be a lot of wasted effort because everybody is pretty much looking for the same information about the same attacks for the same uh, malicious URLs. So fortunately, there are ways to share this security intelligence so that we only need to reinvent the wheel when, uh, I don't know, you think of some example here. <laughs> Information sharing and analysis communities. They are necessary because some important industries like utilities, healthcare, financial, air transport and such can pose some threats to national security. So every country or mostly every country has allocated some resources to gather all this cybersecurity knowledge and data in each field to be ready to intervene if cyber attacks happen and to protect national security and lives in the end, because that's what matters the most. And by the way, as an exam tip, if given the option, lives are the number one priority in all CompTIA exams, including CISA Plus. Now, human life is probably pretty high even on your own list of priorities, but I just uh, thought I should mention this one here. Just keep an eye out for questions that ask you about saving lives in a case of disasters. ISACs, or Information Sharing and Analysis Centers, is the name for the non-profit organizations that share this security intelligence information. One advantage is that these centers gather information directly from the good people working in their specific industries. So the information is very specific and very relevant to others in the same industry. Some examples of ISACs include for healthcare, we have ageisac.org, which is focused against loss of PHI, that is, protected health information, for blackmail, extortion, ransom, or compromising medical data or medical equipment. For the financial sector, fsisac.com, focused on companies that are obvious targets for fraud. For aviation, we have aisac.com, focuses on intelligence regarding terrorist actions and terrorist attacks. For government, actually federal US government, uh, we have the multi-state ISAC and even a specialized ISAC dealing with elections and security against uh, election fraud. For utilities and other critical infrastructure, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency provides guidance for a lot of industry sectors. You can find all the links in the video description. This could be a good place to mention this just for your general knowledge. You might have heard saying that the internet was designed to survive a nuclear war. That is definitely not true, even though the internet is a very resilient network by design. But these Isaacs have nothing to do with this. Again, the purpose is not to ensure the survival of the internet, but of the human race. Do you remember this? Pfft, of course you do. It's the threat intelligence cycle. What a stupid question, Andrew. Well, if you remember this, then this sharing business fits best in the dissemination phase of that threat intelligence cycle. And the use cases for sharing this information fall into these four categories, these four bullets on the screen. Let's spend just a few seconds on each and try to understand how can security information sharing help us from all these different perspectives. First, risk management and security engineering. The most obvious one, you share security information to upgrade yourself, which means properly choosing and configuring the right security hardware, software, network platforms like um, switches, routers, firewalls, all in your company for the single purpose of reducing your attack surface. And very important, if the organization handles 
any kind of software development, then this security information must be shared with the developers as well. Let them know if a specific library or a protocol has some security weaknesses. Make sure they don't use those in the software that they're developing. We'll talk more later about secure coding practices. Then for incident response. Another one that should be obvious. We care about security intelligence to be better informed and to know what to do when bad things happen, when we are under attack or when we just discover that we've been compromised this morning, last week or a year ago. So learning how to respond to security incidents is a very important objective that we can achieve by properly sharing this security information. Vulnerability management. This is more on the strategic high level side. The purpose of a vulnerability management program in an organization is to keep a close eye on your infrastructure and identify as soon as possible any new vulnerabilities or weaknesses that might appear in time. Either because something new was introduced in the network, some configuration has changed or simply because some previously unknown vulnerability has just been discovered. Like with the Intel processors uh, and their vulnerabilities of uh, Spectre and Meltdown. Uh, vulnerability management not only keeps track of them, but should also implement ways to keep them under control. Again, like with Intel, where those were hardware vulnerabilities, which you cannot patch right away. Vulnerability management is a very important process because this allows you to fix gaps in your security before an incident actually has a chance to happen. So it's about integrating security intelligence into your actual organization, into your processes, your network, your, your endpoints. And if you proactively scan for vulnerabilities, this ensures that you are always up to date on your security posture. What do we need to fix? Where are our weaknesses? You might be thinking, well, all this is very difficult. It's, t it's time consuming. And, and yes, it is. But compare this with the potential loss in a real breach. A real vulnerability management process can and will save you money, can help you avoid very costly breaches where you can lose customers, reputation or actual money from fraud or fines. Detection and monitoring. Finally, the last use case is to use this information to improve your own ability to detect future threats. More information should mean that you can better fine tune your devices, your sensors, your firewalls, your IPSs, or any alerting system so that it better matches real threats. The idea is to avoid as much as possible those false positives, right? When you receive an alert for normal traffic, or even worse, <laughs> false negatives when you don't receive an alert for traffic that is actually malicious. So it's not enough to just have detection and monitoring, but it should be robust. Too many false positives will cause the security team to start ignoring them altogether, like in the boy who cried wolf, right? And too many false negatives, well, it means that you've been compromised and you don't even know it. Also, make sure you cover all relevant places in the network. So firewalls, IPSs, web application firewalls, email and web servers should all be monitored. And again, just like vulnerability management, all this talk about detection and monitoring needs to be an ongoing function, always up to date, uh, not just something that you do once and then forget about it. Now let's go back for just a second to this slide right here. And let's try to remember what we've mentioned, that we need a vulnerability management process. So how do we actually do this vulnerability management? Well, first of all, you need to assign responsibilities. People need to know what are they responsible for in this process. So they don't just stare at each other or run in circles when bad things start happening. Then you need proper documentation. Make sure everything is documented and up to date and that every process is in there again, so that everybody knows what to do. Don't rely on people's memory. There is no such thing. <laughs> Write everything down. Then, well, actually, you might even want to start with this. Uh, make sure management and then the users understand the reason behind vulnerability management. You need support from top management for this to work. 
Then find out as much as you can about your environment. Keep an inventory of your devices, your assets, their configurations. Collect and then backup your configurations in some centralized place where you can then analyze them. After you have an inventory of devices and configurations, assign a business risk to each item in the inventory or determine how badly you would suffer if a specific item would be compromised, like a specific server or your ISP router or some storage device. And this is going to help a lot with prioritization. Then make sure you choose the right tools for assessing their vulnerabilities. This is where you actually find those vulnerabilities that we keep talking about, either manually or even better with dedicated automatic vulnerability scanning software like Nessus or OpenVAS. And also think about configuring them right and tweaking them a bit to better match your environment. This helps tremendously with avoiding false positives and false negatives. Be ready to schedule maintenance when issues are detected. And last but not least, be consistent. Don't procrastinate because vulnerability management is a continuous process, not just a do it and forget it sort of thing. So that's pretty much it about intelligence sharing. Remember that countries have dedicated organizations called ISACs that deal with collecting and disseminating this intelligence information. And also don't forget why we're doing this in the first place, this collecting and sharing of information to help us with risk management, uh, incident response, vulnerability management, and for our own ability to detect and monitor the threats like these. So good luck on the exam. Don't forget to subscribe and see you on the next video.